Well, that's going to be about it. Thank you for coming. Today, we've had the only list of Frank Byron. I was stopping to be on Atlas and predicted failing models for erosion in Paris pipeline in Trinidad and Tobago. But before we start, I'd like to begin by on Mr. Frank Byron. Mr. Frank Byron is actually pursuing an MPhil PhD at the University of Trinidad and Tobago in corrosion science in the Department of Process Engineering. His supervisors are uh, Professor Kellen Kimball from UWE and myself, Nathan Mohammed. Mr. Byron did a first degree, a bachelor's degree, in mechanical engineering from the University of Trinidad and Tobago, and he presently employed a career at UWE where he works in the Industrial Material Unit. Mr. Byron has a vast uh, experience in corrosion monitoring techniques in which his PhD work is based on. So without further ado, Mr. Frank Byron. Thank you. Good day, everyone. Well, today my um, my own progress report on what I've done so far and what I hope to continue doing. Okay. Well, the next providing committee, top right as, as uh, Dr. Mohammed said, Mohammed is taking there, and the committee members are Dr. Singh and Mr. Chapu from Mohammed. Okay, so we start with chapter one. That is to do with, well, the topic of my thesis is more or less corrosion, right? Corrosion of pipelines. So we start with identifying what is corrosion, right? Corrosion can be defined as a chemical and electrochemical reaction between a material and the environment, right? We all suppose what corrosion is, right? That occurs amongst us. All the time, right? Mm -hmm. It causes serious problems, right? It contributes to the depletion of the world's natural resources because you know steel, which is thrust, is made from iron ore, which is from the earth, and when it takes that out, process to form steel, you have corrosion, and the corrosion is depleted, and the corrosion depletes of steel again, right? It also causes it also causes a lot of some, some, some money to industries because of shutdown, you know, and schedule plant maintenance. And there's also the problem with catastrophic failures which occurs in, in the industry. Right? Now, according to we have not, we have not done any um, corrosion studies in Trinidad to know the corrosion cost, but I know in the United States they did some some. Um, Studies and they found that approximately, approximately two hundred twenty-six billion dollars every year is spent on direct cost, which is about three point one percent of the gross domestic product. Right? And what they found also was that approximately twenty-five to fifty percent of them could be preventable of the crucial that could be preventable. Right? Normally, when they make pipelines, it's supposed to last, the design pipelines to last about 50 years, but a lot of times the pipeline exhausts their usual life in less than half that time. Factors that affect pipeline life include a number of factors nature of environment, the operating conditions, you know, the quality of maintenance, plus a whole host of other possibilities, right? And we know electric chemical corrosion occurs only in the presence of liquid or moisture. And that is why we can now look at the corrosion and see how we can either mitigate it or prevent it from happening. Right? Corrosion metals have a characteristic inherent tendency to corrode, right? Each metal is right, and the corrosion reactions. Uh, sorry. Uh, because the corrosion reactions are is the oxidation which takes place at the anode, reduction which takes place at the cathode, and then there is the ionic, the electron transport from one anode to the cathode. Right? So once these 
this cell is set up to also take place. Right? Now the driving force for the closure reaction is the potential difference between the two metals. Right? And, and the corrosion rate of the material depends on the characteristic of the solution, right? Which can be conductive, the solution can be conductive, it can be acid or alkaline, or it can be the conflict of the power, or the ionization power of the solution. It causes all these characteristics, cause corrosion, right? Now, there are different types of corrosion. So we need to understand different types of corrosion. There is, and the corrosion can be based on just the appearance. The first type, the uniform corrosion, where there is just a uniform penetration of corrosion on the surface, right? This is when anodes and cathode cells are set up on the surface and they just move around all the time because of the polarity and there's cause corrosion on the surface. That's what you see normally all over in other metals. There is the pitting corrosion. This pitting corrosion is a localized type of corrosion. It occurs when there is an aggressive species in the atmosphere, like chlorides also, that falls on this ensemble. It breaks passivity and a is formed. Right? Then there is the concentration cell corrosion, which depends on the, the potential difference between two, two metals, right? Two environments, sorry, right? So, like crevice corrosion, if you have a crevice, they have a sample. They have one sample of the here and like another sample of that. Right? You have different <coughs> environments there. And because of the potential difference, they have corrosion being set up right in, at the corners there. There is also galvanic corrosion. And this corrosion occurs when the metal or alloy is electri electrically coupled together, right? In an electrolyte, right? So the three central components for, for galvanic corrosion is the, the metal, two, 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 uh, two, two surfaces with different potentials, like they have copper and steel here, then they have a common electrolyte, and then they have the electrical path. So corrosion takes this. Straight current corrosion is another type of corrosion, another type of galvanic corrosion, but this one includes when there's a current involved, external current. Like in pipelines and soils, the external current comes onto the um, onto the metal part and as it runs off, that area there becomes anodic and you have uh, acceleration corrosion at, at that point. Then there's a stress corrosion. In stress corrosion you have to have three Three types of um, three conditions necessary. You need to have the tensile stress and material, a successful material, and a specific environment, that's a corrosive environment. And once those three things combine, you have stress corrosion cracking. Right? Now in stress corrosion cracking, there are different types of stress corrosion cracking. There's the anodic stress corrosion cracking caused by chlorides, there's the cathodic stress corrosion cracking caused by hydrogen. And then there is sulfide stress corrosion cracking. With intergranular corrosion, there is there is another, that's another localized type of corrosion where the grain boundaries where localized the corrosion tracks the grain boundaries. Like in stainless steel, aesthetic stainless steel, when you weld aesthetic stainless steel, you have that area there where you have to weld once it's once it reaches in temperature. Carbon, carbon migrates that area, it, it combines with chromium and then it, they fall off and that area there is, has a different potential to the main, to the main body of the stainless steel. So you have similar metals and, and corrosion takes place right at this, at this point here. Right? Then there's erosion corrosion, this takes place in pipelines, most times. Right? There's a, a rapid acceleration or increase of the rate of duration of attack, right? Because of mechanical wear, abrasion, or a combination of those. Right? You can actually see with, with erosion corrosion, you can actually see the direction of the flow. Because as it goes through, 
it's turbulent. It, it takes away the um, material and form that, that, that sort of thing. Then there's the microbial extrusion. The microbial extrusion is found is because of microbes. And this is found in soils, water, crude oil, and emulsion fluids. Right? And the most important microbe is the sulfur resin bacteria. Right? In pipelines, because once sulfur is present, microbes form, and these microbes go to go to sulfur. When they eat sulfur, they oxidize sulfur, they form sulfuric acid, and that is what touches the material, and they continue to survive in that condition. Okay. Now, the um, environments, the coastal environments include, include the marine environment, which is characterized by chlorides. Right? There's also minor chemicals in the environment, plus you have these organic material and little organisms, they also influence the closure rate of metal in the marine environment. There's industrial environment which is which is um, contains sulfur and nitrate compounds and that causes another type of corrosion. And then there's the soil environment which which is influenced by the aggressiveness, which is influenced by soil type, the resistivity, the water content, pH and a lot of factors. So that is corrosion, right? Now the rationale for this study, right, is the importance of pipelines in the economy of Trinidad. I mean, it can be understood because once you have so much corrosion, we need to understand what caused the corrosion and how you can help prevent it from, you know, occurring. Right? So normally, pipeline systems are treated for uniform corrosion, but most times they are. They are caused by localized localized systems, right? So this again, we need to understand what takes place in this situation. Then the local environment, which is considered an industrial marine environment, it has soils, it has sulfur, it has nitrogen, a whole lot of food, a lot of components that cause erosion. Again, this is why you know what we need to understand erosion to how to try to see how to mitigate the exclusion of the right. Another rationale was to compare the corrosion rates of ferrous pipelines, different ferrous pipelines that have pipelines that have different alloys with different soil, different soil conditions. Right? And then one another rationale is to produce an external corrosion mode prediction model of pipelines to use in the industry. Right. Now the objectives of the study are three, right? One is to identify and evaluate the many corrosion filaments. Another objective is to produce an atlas, right? That depicts corrosion filaments throughout the country. And the third objective is to develop a predictive model, filament model, of pipelines using electrochemical techniques. The scope of the of the of the, of the work a number of changes pipelines caused by some few mechanisms, right, to collect from industry, right? And just perform field analysis. This is to understand the failure mode, the failure faults, and also to recommend how to prevent it from happening again, right? At the end, case histories will all be collected, right, to be presented. And at last, a pool of pictures that map the type of corrosion throughout the country. Right, will be developed, and at the end, a predictive failure model of corrosion first by then using electrochemical techniques will be will be will be uh, will be designed. Right. The methodology for the work involved I collect about 90 field pipelines from from the industry. The, the pipelines were collected from this area. That's a wasa area, right? That is those water pipes. Chemical pipes in the Kuba area. Got pipes from down Point Coast area and then pipes from Nyaru area, right? So it's a wide area 
จะไปเกิดขึ้นไปซ้ำคือรวมกันสองแบบ the principle of determining the station will collect and make back from information and samples then you have preliminary condition where you have to have to look at the area see the colony cohesion product collected then you do the empirical examination and you have results discussion conclusion and recommendation right The target industries for the failures was petrogen at the three points, one at Point Lapier, at Santa Clara, and the other one at Point Morton. Right? I also went to five from National Gas Company, NDC, and BPTT, and then there was Wasa that I also went to from. Right? Another focus will be designed in methodologies for external corrosion work modeling of corrosion. The methodology for, pred for, for predictive failure model, right? This research situation will last approximately 15 months, right? Stage one for initial data collection, site visit, and establishing research method, right? This will be followed by another one for, oil, for soil sampling, experiments, experimental setup, and preparation of testing material, right? Upon completion of the initial activities, then a corrosion experimental study and simulation of predictive corrosion load will be carried out in stage two. Right? This includes setting up similar grade material, the same material as set up in the field, similar grades in the lab, and do a comparison corrosion load in the lab as compared to corrosion load in the field. Right? The field work will involve soil samples to be collected from three different sites and water laboratory immediately for soil sample for soil analysis, right? And the sample to be done about one meter deep, right? The type of soil contained at the three different sites will be clay, the peat soil, and the sandy soil, right? One site, we have three sites, so one site will accommodate four holes, right? And four holes will have three steel samples. Three steel samples, right, of each grade, right, the whole. So if all might have, will have either four holes and four holes at each grade, and you have about 108 pipes that will have positive in the ground. And every three months, they got one side from one side from each side, they got one hole, collect the samples. Carry back to the lab, do an analysis on it, where you can actually find corrosion rate at that point, right? So this will be completed over every three months we have to appear one year, right? The steel, the steel coupons will be taken from actual pipelines. We have two types of pipelines, the API fiber, the X52 and the X70 pipelines. Those two pipelines will be cut and that's what I'll be using for the experiment. The methodology for the lab test, that's the soil property and corrosivity test, but we're using standards, right? So the, the major classification in identifying the type of soil is the grain size distribution test, right? And this is done according to the ESTM D42, right? Other tests we'll be looking for is the moisture content, liquid limit, plastic limit, plasticity index, and shrinkage limit. All these will be done by this specification, right? All this is important to identify the properties of the soil, right? The moisture content will be used in using this specification, right? It's limited to moisture content of the soil. And then for the new course of the test, this specification again, we are finding the pH, the temperature, soil type, moisture content, using sensitivity, redox potential, and fluid content, right? Now, an overview of the test we conducted in the lab will be the laboratory tests for corrosion studies, the soil, soil content measurements using the soil property, and the soil corrosion test. For the material, the corrosion growth using weight loss method and compared with the electrochemical techniques.
methodology for evaluation results. Uh, we'll adopt the ASTM G1 specification where that shows the gap of prepare for the clean and not analyze the samples when taken from the soil to get the corrosion rate. Right? The STM analysis of the corrosion morphology of the ones will be determined to help in the interpretation of the corrosion model. Right? And the electrochemical field and spectrometry, potential dynamic polarization, cycle polarization, and linear polarization methods will be used to assist in developing the model. In the chapter 2, which is usually survey, right, have all the completed items include a review of the course of behavior, tendency of the fuel to roll, the characteristics of the material corroding in soil, marine, and industrial environments. Review also on the different forms of corrosion, I also did a review on all of those, and research also on the distributed products, that is, using this. Um, um, I define standard, standard type of pipes. The research procedures for analyzing failures and development as a class were also completed. And a literature review on the modeling of corrosion processes was also established. Now, the critical analysis of papers I have read a total of 125 papers, right? and of all these, I have critiqued about 12 of them, and these are the papers that are critiqued to get a better understanding of corrosion. Right, research findings after this did all the research, the findings were that corrosion varies, corrosion rate of steel and soil varies largely with soil type. Right? We also know that corrosion proceed, proceed basically by the action of water and oxygen. But localized, but, but localized corrosion of it is more likely to occur because of the non homogeneity of the surrounding soil and the non uniform contact of metal to soil. So, soil, the corrosion pipeline will be a uniform corrosion, will be pitted, right? So, that's what we call the research. And the effects are more pronounced in the still soil than on, in, on the still soil. What we also found out was that generally, soil corrosivity is not as, as, as much as you think. The average is about 0.1 mm per year once pipe against the soil. Presentations I have completed about 20 presentations, right, on field analysis, and I give this presentation to industry, different industrial personnel, and these are the, the um, field analysis presentations that I did. Okay. Now, theoretical chapter 3, theoretical correlation. Right? Corrosion evaluation usually has two main objectives to predict the compatibility before material is used in the environment and to aid in understanding why corrosion occurs. Now, electrochemical techniques give you a good idea. Right? It's an alternative and it's rapid. You can get corrosion rates very fast using that new technique. So, the various electrochemical techniques, as I said, involve LRP, potential dynamic polarization, cyclic polarization, and EIS. Right, corrosion origin and use of potential stack. Now, the corrosion origin will be the electrochemical techniques. You will need a potential stack to actually drive the corrosion. So then you can, when, when it gives the, um, when you get, when you get the model, you can actually interpret what is taking place at different times during the corrosion process. Right? I'll be using a gamma ring. Gamma ring, 600 potential stack, right? With a range of current ranges and voltage ranges. Right? Predictive models of pipeline failures using the gravimetric wave loss, right? This method involves weighing the sample before and we weigh it after, and then we get the corrosion rate from it, right? And using Faraday's law, which is weight loss is equal to current by time by a constant factor, and that weight loss can now be changed to be 
because the um, because it's going to be expressed it's going to be a transition rate by this formula transition rate is going to be constant multiplied by weight over the density by the year by the time it takes to be created this technique, the weight loss technique requires long years so it might have some benefits, it might have all the benefits that they require, right? Because the, the long, you won't do, you, nothing can be learned, nothing can be learned about closure losses, right? Between the retrieval times, right? But the benefits of the closure rate from the weight loss coupons is that an exact measurement is made, right? The limitations of weight loss coupons are that only total corrosion over the entire length of the exposed period is measured. And there is no information gathered as to the corrosion rate as a function of time. Right. One method, the electrical chemical method, gives you a bigger than continuous corrosion rate. Right. And this is the one electrical chemical method that is using that is linear. Polarization system level, right? Where you have the potential on this side against the current is plotted. So as you increase potential, so what what happens? The sample is there, you get the corrosion, the corrosion potential of the sample, right? Where at this point here, no corrosion takes place, right? But as you apply a voltage plus or minus 20 reach, I mean plus or minus 20 millivolts. You find the curve goes up and there's a straight line, right? And at this point is where the corrosion rate can be determined. Because at this point, you get the polarization resistance, and from the polarization resistance, right, the corrosion rate of the metal, right, the slope, that this point in the corrosion, the slope of this, of this, um, of this curve. Is proportional to the closure rate of the metal in the environment. The second method is the potential dynamic polarization method. This method examines the overall closure rate of the metal. Right? So, what you do, you apply again, you apply a voltage starting from the capturing reaction area, and slowly, as you, as you apply the potential, you have the current. Goes this way. So at this point, you find corrosion is active, the sample is active here. It reaches a point where it stops, it slows up. This is the primary passage of potential. And at this point, the current drops drastically to a region called passive region. Right? At this passive region here, if you apply more potential over a while of time, it will then, it will then, what happens there, the film, the potential. Um, protective film, then breaks, and again it goes back into a corrosion mode. Right? They might have a secondary passivation point higher, but this area is called the transpassive region. Right? So, with this method, you can actually see, tell which part is active on the metal, which part is passive on the metal. Right? Then there's another, the other method, which is the, which is the cycle polarization method. Again, you apply a potential between the angle and the cathode, and as it rises here, right, goes to the highest point, the apex point. Right? You do a reverse scan, and the reverse scan and comes down here at this point here, where it intersects the forward scan. That is called the protection potential. So the angle protection potential you can get from this graph from this graph from this um, model, you can also get the fitting potential, which is right at this point here where it is. Away, right? So this again, this this method is good for passive materials, right? Stainless steel materials. You can actually get the potential of the stainless steel and the protection potential of the stainless steel. Okay. Then you have the PIS method, also known as PC PDS method, right? Again, <coughs> this involves applying a set of AC potential plus or minus 10 millivolts. At the so the potential, but these models are different from the last model is that you have the nitrous, these two graphs 
same, see, you can get similar equation, more like similar equation. This is called the Nyquist plot, and this one is called the Boyd plot, right? The polarization resistance, what you're looking for, because you want to find the corrosion rate, the polarization resistance, the diameter of this circle. Nyquist plot is always a circle, right? And then you have the solution resistance, which is the distance from here to the beginning of the arm, of the graph. Similarly, in this boy plot, the polarization resistance is from this lower end to the upper part here. And the solution resistance is that distance there. Right? So, this is another way of finding corrosion rate. This is, this is important. This is a technique for coatings. Right? You can do how which is best put in to put on a piece of metal. Right? So, what I show you, I just gave an um, advantage and disadvantage of different types of electrical metals. LRP against potential dynamic, against cyclic, against PIS. Now, for ferrous pipelines, steam pipelines that I'm doing, what might be most important would be the potential dynamic polarization and cyclic polarization method. Right? Now, this potential dynamic polarization method is a destructive method. So, this will be done last. Because the other methods, you don't destroy much you can do it over and over. Right? But this method, it destroys much here because it goes, it, it's very rapid, it goes through the whole range of, of um, potentials and current. Now, chapter 4 for the procedures, right? This approach includes finding conducting failure analysis. Well, I said this procedure, remember I said I'm doing both what I did so far and what I propose to do, right? The procedure here is when I collect the sample, when I collect the samples, you get as much background information as possible from the client, right? So you can now build up what you thought happened. What caused the failure of the pipeline, right? And then you start to work on it, right? By you start investigating by doing the probable cause of failure, right? So once you get an apparent reason, you don't need to go any further. You stop. Otherwise, you have to go to the stages, right? Where it follows the sequence of logical, uh, following the logical, logical sequence series of stages and findings, right? Before you finally reach the point of the failure, what was the failure? So at the end, you'll do, you'll get photographs of the failure, micrographs, fractographs, elemental analysis, and the fractograms and elementals, right? So that is the failure analysis that will be taken care of Right? So the equipment that will use for the failure analysis will be this. One equipment is a, what they call a macro. This is the, this is a macroscope where you just see this goes about just three times, three, three times. So you just see it in another bigger. So you actually see the um, the corrosion, the corrosion figures. So this was seen first, right? If you want higher resolution, then you go to the kind of microscope because the reason why these these this microscope, it gives you, in other words, remember, light, you keep your proper surface, light refracts. So you can't, you will be able to see using a microscope, right? You use a macroscope, right? And then you have the STM, which again produces a proper image that you like to see on the screen, right? So what happens with the STM? You have a beam, electron beam, the STM is an electron beam. That rasters across the um, fracture surface and it forms an image that you can now see. The images that form are secondary electrons, back static electrons, and characteristic catch rays. All because the characteristic catch rays, all because they have a spectrum attached to the SCM. So you have to identify what compounds or what elements are on the sample. Other instruments, this is a microscope, the sample, you want to see the structure of the steel starting to degrade. So again, you need to polish the sample and you can put it under this, this microscope so you can observe and report the details of interest.
right? In fact, this account of certain information, now when you're doing a detail analysis, you also need to classify the material, right? So you need to analyze the material and steal to see whether it's really the steel is supposed to be. So in that case, you need to do a carbon and sulfur analysis of the steel or if the corrosion product, they give some percentage of the carbon and sulfur in the, in the sample. Okay? For the steel itself now, this spectrometer is used, an X-ray process spectrometer, right? But to use it, they need the sample needs to be polished smooth. So we use granules, grind for the sample, and then you can put in the machine here, where it actually gives you an alloy composition of the sample. Right? Now the X-ray diffraction, this is an X-ray diffraction machine, right? Where it analyzes the compounds. Right? So you have the corrosion product, you want to identify what is in the corrosion product. And the X-ray diffraction, it gives you a compound analysis of all the compounds, the corrosions, whatever in the is in the corrosion product. Right? If now this requires a certain amount of sample, right? Sometimes you might have a few sample that has a small amount of corrosion. You can't use, can't be enough for the extra diffraction. What you need to put in the SCM, right? And the, to put in the SCM, needs to be conducted. So we have an a evaporator here, right? Which we can form a conductive film on the sample, and you can then put in the SCM for analysis. So, at the end of chapter 5, the conclusions, a corrosion atlas at the end of all this, a corrosion atlas should be developed, right? And the corrosion atlas will be more or less from what I did so far. I did an, an atlas at least for so you, but you don't look at that, huh? right? This, all you did, I did 19 years, all of them are here, and in this, you have, you have, it outlines the background and the type of damage sustained and then provides recommendations. So it has the picture, background one further, and then um let me take a look, it will be faster. And recommendations to be read from a query. Okay. Now this these are the case studies that I did. I mean they are true that there were five different types of um, failures of five types of um, of corrosion failures. This one is an erosion, sorry, not five, eight I said, sorry. This one is an erosion corrosion failure, right? And this is an active case study that, that I did. These are active case studies that I did, right? So this one is a two inch diameter, two inch carbon steel from the interline elbow, right? And what you notice was that it, the elbow it's fitted to a 2 inch K360 carbon steel pipe. It's filled by a between an opening at the 12 o'clock position, right? A larger bit, bit, right? The pipe is used to transfer condensate through the system at temperatures and pressures of 160 and 45 megapascals, respectively, right? We saw this opening there, right? So when you analyze it, go through the same procedure that I showed just now in field analysis, you notice this is when it cut across the extra pipe in the area. You see, in, you saw a thinning of the material. This is the material here, and closer to here, you have a thinning. Okay? And when you look at the inner side of the pipe, you see these markings. Something like horseshoe shaped markings, right? Again, you cut it along the cross section, and you see, using the um, microscope, you see the pits. The pits are in the direction, right? It has a flow. So this also gives you full direction, right? So the mechanism of failure here is when there was a lambda for the pipe, right? And because of the pipe, the restrictions, the stables are bent, right? The hot gases, right, blow up the steel of the of the you know, pipe. Each material has a sort of flex of steel over it. The hot gases blow up the steel, and then that can go to set up, and they have these taken place. At the end, the whole, the whole um, pipe will open up at, at, at those points, right? The recommendations are to, you can increase the pipe and the diameter to increase velocity, right? Not only for my tanker standpoint, but for 
So recommendations here is moisture should not be allowed to settle in the crevice of the tube and cap, right? So no more much more settling, that's a that's a problem. Tea that more resistant is just for the bracket should be used. Right? Or emphasis should be placed on tightening procedures of the cut to prevent over tightening. Right? So you know something to over tightening because extra special material you need to follow the procedure so that will tighten it to Right? Or another thing is to put up a valley separation to so replace between the treading to prevent contact with the two surfaces.
a failure or you stop. So I might assume then that it's not possible to have more than one failure mode at any one site. Right. Well, you do not feel that one 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 but in fact, there are some things in terms of the order there that I would like to comment on outside of this forum because I don't think the order flow is as it should be. So we can comment on how the presentation, how that will be made for thesis. I think the presentation is fine, but for the thesis, there are a couple of wrong sided things in the flow. But forgetting that, I'm talking about the fact that. At the beginning, when you covered multiple corrosion mechanisms, you have about four different galvanic um, processes of corrosion, for example, and maybe one electrolytic or something. But the fact remains is, there is, to me, uh, and I admit that, you know, I know you're an expert here, but one has to recognize that some more than one of those things could be taking place. So, I, I didn't quite follow, you know, if in your analysis, and you do a very detailed forensic analysis as we saw in three case studies, and it is possible that you come across the major motives. I was just curious to find out if you think there's ever a possibility where there may be more than one thing you Yeah, right. Well, this is, this is this is a consideration because you have a kind of interaction there, and it is a consideration because when you come to the predictive model, that is where it is not Because let, I want to get some clarity on the predictive model because you went through the methodology that very quickly, and that was one of the parts that is of most interest to me. So it may be that I may have to check it again outside of this forum. But let me see if I get this right. The plan to, to bury what what is that called? 108 coupons, as you call it. Mm -hmm. Now these would be two inch and three inch pieces of pipe. Mm -hmm. Will it be the same pipe material? So what is that? Mm -hmm. No, it's three different grades of pipe. Three right? different grades of pipe. Yeah, right? Two different diameters. No, the, the, the pipe will be the pipe form in cotton samples, right? Okay. What are you bearing? What are the 108 coupons? Just a square. Right, but, but how many variables you have in the loops? You have in the pipes you bear. Yeah, because yeah. the 108 comes yeah. about because of different soil types and all that. Yeah. I would just like to know how many different grades of pipe. Yeah, so three, three grades, right? Okay, three grades of pipe, but, but not two diameter, three diameter, three diameter, so what are the grade? Alright, so what distinguishes so a, a two inch diameter and a two inch diameter suggests different grades? No, the grades suggest it's just because of the um, property character. The pipe itself the alloy is the pipe. Right? You have right. Pipe. That's why right. right. But um, so you're not really going to be testing to see if there are different impacts of a two inch grade and a three inch grade. Not grade, a two inch diameter and a three inch diameter. So we have to see what do I say the impact? Corrosion depends on the, on the material itself, the alloy. Well, I know it depends on the material, but um, so, so diameter is not going to be investigated. No, okay. One diameter. Huh? One diameter. Okay, one diameter. Yeah. So your coupons will not be like the No, so no, this no, is square, square diameter. Okay, right. So you said to have each side will take four holes. Right. Where are these sides going to be? How much? So you have a special area of on the yeah. sides, or these sides will be where their actual lines. No, well, they you have a point. But I did, I, 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 I,
and each hole has three three grids of pipes, three of them, of, three of them each. Right? So each one has one. nine pieces of pipe. Yes, okay, so you have three grids and you have triplicates of each grid. Right. right, so you're really just exploring the grids. What is the difference from hole to hole? So, so it's just a matter of time now, right? So uh, one, one yes, hole. Yes, they get up separately. Yeah, it's separate the So when you open the hole, you get information on three grids. Well, yeah. one three months. Uh, three months. Yes, yes, I'm going to be time back. Okay? So how many holes are you going to put it on? Only four? No, each side. So it's three sides. Three sides, right? Three sides. Yeah. Now the three sides have different soils. Yes, yeah, yeah, that was it. They have three types of soil. So you are actually going to you you know that those soil types exist there already. Right? Yeah. Alright, okay, so you have three confirmed types. Well, yeah, I'm going to verify it by doing the analysis soil after. Right? Remember, the soil. So what happens if I need to be an analysis? So, it's not going to be wrong. No, but this analysis was a development model. They need to have to give reasons why this took place. Why, but maybe why this one. But don't you think that before you bury all of these coupons, you should verify yeah, the soil? Yeah, I'm going to do it first. So, what are you doing? I think some uh, in the in the, um, in the presentation, they bring some samples, so it's samples first. They do an analysis. Right. Each time they want to retrieve a soil sample, they also do an analysis. So each time you retrieve a sample, you also retrieve some soils and you do it. But yes, yes, because that's controlled. Yeah. But you still want to know that you have the same soil type. Yeah. That you have three different soil types, yeah. and you're sure you have three different yeah. soil types. Okay, so you have three sides, each side having a different soil type. Yeah. In each side, you have four holes. Four holes, yeah. Right. And each hole has And each hole, you have nine. Yeah. Nine, 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 nine. Okay, so this is 12 by nine. Okay, so this is how you get one hole. Mm -hmm. But that just gives us. Um, so, you really are only measuring. For um, four times a year, then. Yes, it's every three, six, nine, twelve months. So after each period, you will give up a hole to each of the three sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now you're going to be doing gravimetric and electrochemical methods. Mm -hmm. Now these electric, you're going to be doing those electrochemical methods on okay. every one of the pipes. Every month, so every each month, each every three month period. Sorry, you you open up a hole, so every three month period you need to have twenty seven okay. samples. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Are you going to be doing the gravimetric and the and each the, one of those electrochemical methods, yeah. each one of those twenty seven samples? Yeah. Because yeah, all, of the, all of the electrochemical methods, and even the gravimetric, mm -hmm. I'm talking about the predictive model from the electrochemical data. Mm -hmm. So, to do this, you will have to do a regression model. Mm -hmm. In which case, you will have to use pH really as the hydrogen ion concentration. So, you will have pH, mm -hmm. hopefully, you will have a few other soil properties. The pipeline will be constant. Type material will be constant, but you have grade. Mm -hmm. So you have grade as a categorical. You have all the different things you measure from those ASTM things. Now, some of those things, how many of them are categorical, how many of them are continuous um, things? Because um, um, to me, like you get a very complicated thing here. Because the truth is that you really have four different points, four different, only four different time points. Mm -hmm. um, so each of the which you have multiple variables with only four points. So I'm not too sure that this will lend itself a regression model. Now, you might be able to get predictive, but you won't be able to use the word predictive. You might be able to do one of NOVA telling you which are the impactful things. 
But regression will tell you, would have told you by how much. Regression will tell you, for example, if you change the pH by so much, corrosion rate will go up by so much. So regression will give you more. But you think about it, if you really only have four different periods when you look at it. So although you have all of these grades and you have triplicates of the grades, those triplicates will have to go into means. So the one rate will be broken down into 36. And those 36 indeed will, will come up with the four things from the sites will be three sites. So you divide that by three, you have 12, but eventually you're ready to bring up four distinct points for each variable. I don't know if you see what I mean. It will not give you a predictive model in the true sense of the world. But let me talk to you about that after, because I'm taking up too much time. Explain to me, and you see all this work you do with all these electrical models. This is the other thing I'm afraid of. How are you going to say, God, how are you going to stop the corrosion at the point that you take it out of the soil? One of the reasons, mm -hmm. for example, why in this soil you're going to pass away is because when you disturb it, you get oxygen in it. Mm -hmm. So as you disturb the soil, oxygen goes in the back and it's the corrosion. So when you dig up these things, because to do 27 of these with about 5 or 6 electrochemical methods and a long gravimetric method, you've gone out of how are you going to stop corrosion from continuing with some of these things? I know you're going to take them out and keep them out. Let's go back to the second unit. Let's go back to the second unit. Let's go back to the second unit. Alright, so okay. So you're going to run two to ten cents samples in maybe two days. Okay, alright. So that takes care of that. What is this simulation about? So what is really the getting the same soil? At the time, you put it great for the end. Put it in the start, put it in the start, what does the end? Apply the tension to the front, right? So yeah, the soil, same soil sample grain for the land and you yeah, simulate the conditions to put the same soil, the same pipe with that same soil and you simulate by applying the potential and the current on the sample in that soil condition because the soil will have the different conditions so at different times of the year, the soil will be different, right? It might have more water, which will allow for maybe a bigger so you take a pipe of the video and apply the different potentials in to get more of the You see the potential where the corrosion starts. That's where you get the corrosion away from that. Yeah, get the corrosion away from that. You see it's especially, you notice how the potential potential dynamic chart with both. So it's not really a, it's not really a, a silicon simulation, it's actually a lab mock-up of the feed. Yeah, right. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, okay, but I'm more a little more comfortable with that already. Because that is, you know. Um, one other thing I was going to ask you. Um, now, all these different corrosion rates you're getting, mm -hmm. each one of them is a different model, you know. Yeah. You know, so the thing about each one of them is a different outcome. Because they are alternatives of each other. Mm -hmm. So it's not to say that they, they are giving you reinforcing information. They're just separate things. So each one of them is a model with only four points and multiple variables. Mm -hmm. Because each one of the corrosion rates is the outcome. And the, on the right hand side of that expression, you have exactly the same conditions. So with all of these multiple corrosion rates and even the gravimetric rate on the left hand side, it's just a model for each of it's still reduced to only four points. So I, I, I think I have to think a little bit about this. I see. I mean, it's, it's well designed, but with only four points, I don't know that you can do regression. And with all of those, uh, because what you really have is wide, short data. And you have other things that, that, that um, militate against using regression in terms of the matrix algebra and underpins that as a, as a model. You know, 
So I would have to, because it's a lot of work. Yeah, that's fine. The electric, but that's the output. That's the, that's the dependent variable. It's the, you have a lot of independent variables because you have all of those soil properties, you have three different grades, three different sites. So those are two models, two variables, the site, the grade, the soil properties, and maybe several of them, there are a lot of them I don't recognize except for the H. All the soil properties in them could be the SPM, which you just have said could be important. All of those are independent variables, but there still is only when all is said and done, um, four periods for all of them. And those four periods will be four times you dig up those holes. You know, so each one of them really is will be four points. You know? Alright, okay, so I think whatever I said, I can always ask you afterwards. Alright. Yeah. Yes, yes, go on. I have uh, your experimental uh, arrangement. When you cite your four sets of nine samples, is there any possibility of electrical cross talk between the samples? No. I mean, are, they yeah. are, they, are they isolated electrical? In other words, I don't know what the difference in, in chemistry of the individual samples are, mm -hmm. but can two samples mm -hmm. set up a corrosion? No, we haven't a distance between them. Okay, so we have a lot of uh, spacing yeah. and adequate to isolate them. Okay. That's all. Any other question? Um, mm -hmm. What are you just uh, testing now? The clay soil, the animal soil, the animal soil, and the sand soil. Those soils are presented for all the soils in the world. Basically, where they find that? Or wherever. If you have a map of the land, where you go, Tomasa, Snowballs, Snowballs, somewhere is in the chat. Tomasa, Snowballs, somewhere over there is in the chat. Then, you have to take the soil from the world. So I don't know the correct graphic. Yeah? And those are where they look at. So I think we'll be honest with you. We'll be honest with you. On the right side. What are the size of that? So, you wouldn't want that to fail just because you use three soils that 
and not corn. Or because he didn't use more soils. Since he said that the electrochemical thing is so rapid, it might be worth your while you really need to use representative soils. You know, so just with like that atlas, which is, which is the basis of it, and with your experience in career, cast your mind back. And see, I mean, those may be main types, I don't know, like I forget what I didn't know about so. But those may be the main types, and they may have some subtypes underneath those that you use in your atlas. But you still want to have the main representative types. Because you do, as you yourself admitted in the beginning, type is going to affect corrosion. So you don't want to be calculating corrosion rates for things that are not affect your earth. And you particularly want to get into the areas where they are pipelines there. Yeah, I think we have one person in the room who has done recent work using soil maps mm -hmm. in Trinidad. Yeah. At that young lady across there. Who is that? My dear? Yes. What was that? Belly? Okay. This from a geotechnical point of view or a agricultural point of view or whatever? Geotechnical. Belly? How can you get that for me? I said, you know, that's the time when I saw her. I was going to say, 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 is, it is from Ahmad's work, and I know that it's very complex. That's all I know. So, that we, what you have to tell us, any, what, 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 what about the soils Frank chose? Any, you have any all the information that we've asked him with regards to what type of soil is in that area, you can get it straight from the soil map. And we have one account map. All right, good. The union talk of the and so called different areas, they will tell you the type of soil and some general characteristics of it. You have given the GPS. Yeah. Because you're ready to go to all kinds of. So you have the kind of information that you want to project, like soil resistance. No. No. They should have not told you that it's like a type of soil, it's a tail, it's a dimension. But you see, he might be able to align that information in the examples in his atlas. Yeah, it is. Yes. It is. Yes. 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 And how far down did you order? Is there a large technical information on the bottom? Yeah, how deep? How far down? How deep did you go? How deep? You go only one meter. Yeah, one meter. Right. You ordered one meter? Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Are those three soils pretty mm -hmm. pretty popular? The ground sandy soil is very pretty as so, well. Um, I'm pretty popular with the kind of variation we have, but we still have that. You have to validate it. Yeah, yeah. But I also say, you know, when I do have in mind soil test and use that same soil, I will give you the actual soil type there, right? So then this, this, these pipelines that I will give you. You know, they'll compare that with that other type of soil. But I would prefer that you kind of have an idea before you look up the, the coupons and, and check the soil at the same time. Oh no, I'm checking you what I'm doing when I'm doing the coupons, I'm checking the soil first and then. Right. First and then afterwards, when it's time to go, I'll check the soil together with the material. You know what I'm saying? Suppose you plant 108 coupons and you don't get plant all of them in the same soil. That's a problem. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going to do, get this for example. Yes, so you need four of the coupons. Yeah, but well, and even if you do it at the same time, you can pick up the coupons yeah. as well, which is fine. It will pick up any, you know, recent changes in the soil. I imagine this happens. I don't know what is the area around, what are the activities in the area around, what I mean, it could change, but, but not 
in terms of whether it's PD or Sandy or all those different things that I know about. But the child being, you see, the atlas of its color and whatnot, we can't look at any trends or any patterns from it. Now, if you take Beverly's information, that's Beverly Chicken's interview, if you take Beverly's information and connect it back with the soil tank that you have in the atlas, certain patterns might occur to you. You see, you broke it down there into microbial corrosion, this corrosion, that corrosion, and you identify the source. Mm -hmm. But in looking through the atlas, well, no, I think the atlas is not really the soil, so the atlas is something general in the first, right? I know, but what I'm saying is, yeah. it may be possible I mean, to think about the pattern the atlas is illustrated, mm -hmm. but even more important, would be if we could make some connections between where we would find microbial corrosion, where we would find pitting, where we would find this, where we would find that. It's a sort of preliminary information, bit of information about connections between corrosion type. Because you see, you are measuring corrosion rates. It's conceivable that the rate and the type of corrosion are connected. It's very conceivable, but you're not measuring. Suppose you have different types of corrosions with the different soils that you have. Then you're going to have a confounder because the dependent variable that you be measuring, which is rate, is not featuring the type. So it's impacted by the type of corrosion is taking place. And I didn't hear you mention, um, you just mentioned getting rates by the different. Um, so that's why I said in the um, different types of electrical like, chemicals, you have, like I mentioned, that one I'm using was the potential dynamic type. It gives you an idea of, of the types because it gives you a. Yes, I'm having an idea of the type doesn't mean that you have designed it out. I mean, knowing you have a confound that doesn't help you, you know. Taking the impact of the confound that out does. I mean, I could know I made, a mis I made a mistake, it's still a mistake. So you could know that there is something confusing your outcome. Knowing that there is something confusing your outcome doesn't make the outcome any clearer to you. So if when you're doing co corrosion rates and you're measuring rates, you also discover that you have different types that you're looking at. You're not going to get a regression model. Because you're not taking type into consideration, you're finding out about type afterwards. I don't know how to tell you again, but what I'm going to tell you, get that piece information, match it up with what you have in there, and first of all, see if there are any patterns between type of corrosion and soil type. Because you have a nice pretty atmosphere, but if we could get that additional, if we could make some actual pattern connections, if we could do that. Because right now, all it really is is a picture book of what corrosion looks like. I mean, there is the forensic analysis of why you determined it was that kind of corrosion. But again, without that extra pattern, it is not as useful as it could be. You know, so all you have to do is take those, match with that. Because you know, we all get really involved in spice here from, you know, I'm making up some more examples from Korea, from your work in Korea. Just to see if there's a pattern. You know, anyway, try, you did a lot of work. Yeah, I, I, I want to say I was very impressed with the breadth of the measure. In terms of the samples that you have already looked at, trying to identify the, uh, I guess, the dominant uh, corrosion <coughs> mode or if corrosion is either one in the field, and if so, what was the dominant mode? How many of those samples were actually in? Uh, in a soil. I mean, some of them seem to have been sampled. Yeah, that's just corrosion by itself. Exactly. Some of the soil, some of the soil, some of the soil. Right, so only some subset of them yeah. have been in soil. Yeah. 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 Ye